The fitness industry is a fucking lie and it's full of bullshit. But the angle I'm about to cover with you is pretty interesting. Let's remove it from the fitness context to begin with. We've all seen adverts on TV for cosmetics, makeup, beauty stuff. And the model that's always promoting it is banging, like fit, like 20 out of 10 fit. And no offense to these models, but they're born with that. You don't have to work too hard in life to be good looking. It's like facial symmetry, different proportions. But then they get the banging model to promote the makeup, which is kind of counterintuitive. The person that needs to spend money on cosmetic makeup the least should not be the one advertising it. So it's almost counterintuitive that you get someone that's beautiful to promote makeup, but what you want is the person taking the makeup to think they'll end up beautiful. So where do we see this most commonly? Oh yeah, fucking hell, the fitness industry. The majority of people promoting supplements, whether at expos or online in magazines, whatever, are fucking shredded and muscular as fuck. Is it because they take the product? No, the factor for selection is that Dave over here has injected more testosterone into his butt cheek in the last three years than you can shake a fucking stick at. And you, the consumer, are very likely to mistake the factor for selection with the product. You see the product and go, fucking hell, he's in good shape because he took that protein shake. Is he fuck? It's filtered fucking milk. And although I'm an advocate of filtered fucking milk, it's not gonna make you wake up like Adonis tomorrow. And this misconception is widely known as the swimmer's body illusion. You might remember I did a shorter video on this that got 25 million fucking views because people were like, oh, he's got a fair point. And basically what I was saying was, you don't pick your sport as much as your sport picks you. Take this for example. I played rugby for 15 years and people often have said to me, James, you've got a rugby player's physique. But do I? Do I actually have a rugby player's physique? Am I big and broad because I played rugby? Or did I play rugby because I'm big and broad? Come to think of it, going back to GCSE PE, they the big cunts and the little cunts. And when they collided, the big cunts went, oh, I like this sport, I could play this. And the little cunts were like, this is shit, I'm going back to play football. Advertising for years, all the way back to Coca-Cola adverts 50 years ago, have confused you, the consumer, by taking a product and putting someone next to it to get you to make a decision that somehow they're correlated like a beautiful model actually needs makeup. Or that a 10 year veteran of steroid abuse and bodybuilding is only big because he took creatine and whey protein. So I'm here to make clear that the factor for selection and the product can't be confused. There are a lot of genetic spectrums that exist. Short, tall, naturally lean, naturally more predisposed to getting obese. Having a massive cock, having a small cock. And why is it, whenever God was dishing out massive cocks, he always gave it to the tall, skinny guys. Never made sense. On that spectrum, we have other things like the ability to build muscle mass, even base levels of hormones. Some people naturally have more testosterone than other people. Some people naturally have more dopamine than other people. And some fucking freaks sit at the elite top of the spectrum where they win everything. Banging testosterone, banging growth hormone, banging height, banging shoulder to waist ratio, banging face symmetry, banging everything. By the time they're 17, all their friends are going, you should become a fitness trainer. Why? Because you fucking look like one. That's why. And that's a big issue you have with the coaches. Oh, do you want to become a PT because you want to help people? You're empathetic, you care about people's problems? No, I fucking look sick as fuck with my top off, cunt. Get me in the gym. A lot of the people that you subscribe to on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whatever the fuck it is, have won the genetic fucking freak lottery in many realms of their life. And you are starting to consider that as being normal. You are succumbing to the swimmer's body illusion. Now I'm not saying that someone under six foot can't play in the NBA, someone has before. But what I am saying is, when you're looking at these people's workout plans, diet plans, fucking macro calculations, whatever it is, you are also succumbing to the same fallacy that many of us do. That a swimmer doesn't look the way he does because he swims, he swims because of the way he looks. And a lot of the time when we see these freaks from the genetic freak show lottery, we think we are hashtag not committed enough, hashtag don't rise and grind enough, hashtag don't put the work in. And that's just not true. And the sooner you can come to terms with the genetic freak show, the better. Because really the journey of fitness is not about product placement and people that promote it just because they've taken ungodly amounts of testosterone or they're willing to starve themselves for four months for a new profile picture. But fitness is about incremental increases that we make ourselves, whether getting fitter, stronger, in better shape, whatever. And the next time someone pops up on your feed with thousands, millions of followers who's in amazing shape with their top off, you can think to yourself, maybe it is their knowledge about training nutrition et al. And then maybe ask yourself this, do they look the way they do because of the methods that they preach, promote, sell, and talk about? Or do they promote, preach, sell, and talk about the things they do because of the way they look? Unfortunately, for many of you watching this, your idea of what a normal natural physique looks like is incredibly warped. You're so far off the mark that it actually makes you depressed and gives you body image issues and makes you feel a little bit nauseous when you look in the mirror when you get out of the shower. But I'm here as a guy with a pretty average physique that works in the fitness industry saying this. Next time you see some fucking Belen prick motherfucking ball bag, toe sucker, promoting the dream bagged up into powder form. 
or even tablets, just understand, they are not the byproduct of the thing they're promoting. Their reason for selection, more often than not, had nothing to do with it. And to recap, fitness is about making incremental gains wherever you are in your life, in whatever realms you think you're going to enjoy the most. And fitness is also about being very accepting of the cards you've dealt in life and playing them the best you can. Because if you're not willing to do that, there's not really many other things that you can do. But if you're unwilling to play the cards you've been dealt in life, I'll leave you to talk that over with your therapist. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Bye-bye.